right? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Julian. Thank you, Danny. Can I get on TV with him? Yes. Danny told me this story <laughs> yesterday that sometime in early August of 1964, he's flying from Memphis to New York, and in Memphis, he runs into a black guy in overalls like, like this guy has, and that was kind of a uniform, a civil rights uniform, and so he approached the guy, and it turned out he was with CORE, right? And so they yeah, right, he was a so core they, they chit chat for a little while, and then Danny gets on the plane and flies to New York. Gets to New York, where his mother's meeting him, and he's standing there, and a man comes up to him, whips out his FBI thing, and says, is your name Mickey Schwerner? And to Danny, me. Yeah, to Danny. And Danny says, no, my name is Danny Lyon. He said, can you prove that? And you showed him your uh, wallet. <laughs> Showed him your ID. No, no, I, I said, I said, said. I, he says, can you prove it? I said, yeah, this is my mother. Yeah. And what did he say? What did he say? He said, that's not good enough. And turns out that some good citizen in Memphis had seen this black guy in coveralls and, and, and him. And he had what was called an ISRO. You know what that is? At the time. Watch it. And uh, right on the edge there. <laughs> Danny had this curly hair. I had long nice hair, you know. Okay. Well, you got your and hair. And so the guy thought you know, he was huh? Michael Schwerner and, and thought the, <laughs> the other guy was James Cheney. Right. And it called the FBI. Right. Incredible. This is Selma. Right, okay. Is that Jim Clark? That's Clark, yeah. And the sunglasses, that's the sheriff of uh, the county. Dallas County, evil man, evil man. Later arrested for possession of marijuana. He grew it. Yes, he, he grew, grew it. it. Grew it. You know, yeah. Taylor Branch, he's your buddy, right? Yeah. You know, Taylor Branch. Taylor Branch said he was like a nice guy living in the trail. He felt bad about the whole thing, and he did time for growing marijuana. Yeah. Which means maybe he was kind of moving towards us. Yes, you, know? you never know. I mean, in a sense. You know? mm. <laughs> now, this is a picture I've never seen before, Danny. Is this in Albany? No, no, this is a, I think it's in Cambridge, Maryland. Okay. It was a, the only place, you know, it's like the Jesus story. The only place with room for people to meet is like the drugstore, you know. Or this was a, I, it was amazing. I mean, you didn't have to be too bright to realize that a historical event was taking place in front of you, you know, which is what was happening. They'd meet, this was uh, some high school gymnasium they were meeting at. Other times it was a funeral parlor. They were favorite places. Because it was places where black people owned the building or, and they were safe. And so that's where these uh, events took place. I think this is Cambridge, Maryland. Could be. 50 years ago. Uh, so we and I were discussing these dates, right? So mm -hmm. they were murdered on what was June the 21st. Yeah. It took weeks for them to find their body. They, they, they didn't find the body until what August the 6th or something. Yes. So that's June. I'm all not sure June, about the date, but it was sometime. Yeah, in there. early in August. So for over six weeks, the, the word in in the South was that that these kids were just hiding, and it was a publicity stunt. The governor said they're in. Hiding out in Cuba. That's a good place. Yeah. But they weren't hiding. They murdered them in the woods. I mean, I write in this new, I wrote, there's a new book called The Seventh Dog, which is not out yet, but, but it'll be out in the spring. And I, I wrote about these boys. And I wrote about all the young people I knew who, who died, who got murdered. And, and you, you know, you look at Andy, or I mean, I was the same age as these guys. And you think of the life that I've lived since then. I've lived three times as long as they got to live on this earth, you know. We don't get another shot at this, you know. And there's been so many like that. And it, in the book, you know, I ask the question, who lives, who dies, you know. You know, I was lucky that motorcycle, the one that came out of nowhere, missed me, you know. That's the motorcycle that kills you because you don't see him, or the car, or the bullet. I did what Andy did all the time. All that, the kid, that kid had been there for one day in Mississippi, and all he did was get in his car to go for a ride. A church had been burned down. That was no big deal. They were burned down all the time, 40 churches. 
I thought it was a very boring subject. I remember once a guy, someone said, oh, a church, let's go. I think I went with Matt Heron, and we went there. It was a bunch of Sid in the Blocks and, mm -hmm. and in the Piney Woods. And it was all busted up, and it was still smoldering. Yeah. I mean, there were no people there. And I said, well, boy, this is boring. I mean, how can you take it? I mean, I had no interest in it. But that's what he did. He just got in this car, and that was the end of his life. So 20 years ago, I, I was teaching a class, and, and I always thought they should be a postage stamp made. They died trying to register people to vote in the United States of America. And John Lewis says, next year, this year is the 50th anniversary, and he says he thinks it'll happen. It should happen. You know. Fanny Lou Hamer's on a stamp. Yeah. Don't you love using those stamps? My father's going to be on a stamp. Oh, that's wonderful. Really? Yeah. Cool. Henry Louis Gates is on the stamp committee. He whispered it to me, told me not to tell anyone. That's okay. <laughs> That's, okay. <laughs> That's great. I was a stamp collector as a kid. Who are these guys? I hope they don't put him on a stamp. I mean, no, seriously. <laughs> I'm but you, you said something interesting when you saw this picture yesterday, and that was they have to carry their own guitars. Yeah. So this is the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. The, the morning of the march, where King will make this speech, we all know by heart. And John Lewis will make a very important speech. And J Julian and, and I are up, up, you know, underneath Lincoln. And these guys are all showing up early. What were you doing that morning? I had a couple of jobs. One was passing out everybody's speech. Everybody was asked to deliver, who spoke was asked to deliver a copy of his or her speech, no hers, his speech, and they had to be passed out to the media. And I passed out John Lewis's speech to the media people, and I said, notice this, that he's the only person here who's going to talk about black people, not Negroes, not colored people, oh, black I... people. None of them paid any attention. Uh, but I also gave Coca-Colas to the movie stars. <laughs> and my most prominent member, memory is giving a Coca-Cola to Sammy Davis Jr. And he said, thanks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Who that? Now, everybody who sees this makes fun of my pants. Hey, you notice our sneakers? Come yeah. On. We both got pink sneakers. It's just a coincidence. Yes, that's, I don't know this guy on the left, myself, John Lewis, Jimmy Hicks, who is editor of the uh, Amsterdam News, and this guy, I don't know who this guy is. This is right across the street from the 16th Street Baptist Church. John and I flew to Birmingham. You could fly to Birmingham from Atlanta then, you can't do that now. Uh, and we got there in the afternoon and were able to, the thing was still smoking. Yeah, I flew in. I actually missed the flight. I was in Newark waiting, and I was talking to Fred Goldfrank, and I didn't hear the announcement. I missed the flight. Mm -hmm. and, and then the next morning, I flew in, and, and I got in a car with you, and some local defense guy was driving around the neighborhoods, and what? he had a gun on him. I mean, lying right there. Oh, Do you uh, remember that? Bruce he, Gordon. No, it wasn't Bruce. I mm -hmm. mean, it was a local guy, and... Mm -hmm. and you know, not only were these, these four young girls, one of them was decapitated. You know, this is the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. And this square in the church was the center of King's marches. And these famous fire hose pictures were all taken right in, in that park. I, I, I wasn't, I didn't photograph that stuff. I wasn't there. But, but uh, they put a bomb in the uh, bathroom. In the stairs under the stairs next to the bathroom, the women's bathroom, and these little girls were in the bathroom primping for church, and bam. They were 14, yeah. And, and one of those guys was an FBI informer, mm -hmm. and has a very amazing history, meaning Hoover was getting report, and he was also present uh, when Lyola, what, what's her name? Viola Viol Luizzo. You know, yeah, was murdered shot to death. He was all the same person, was riding in 
the car with these Klan guys. You know, I, I have this civil rights tour I lead every year, and when we go to Birmingham, the guy who is the U.S. attorney speaks to my group, and he has the FBI tapes that sat on a shelf in the FBI office here in D.C. for years and years and years because J. Edgar Hoover wouldn't let them be released to the prosecutor. And on these tapes, you can hear one of these guys arguing with his girlfriend. She says, you were with Waylene, weren't you? you what a wonderful name, Waylene. You were with Waylene, weren't you? You were with Waylene. She says, no. He says, no, I was making the bomb. Man. Now, does everybody know who these people are? A, they're bad people, I can tell. A guy in the middle to look at his The eyes. former mayor of D.C., Marion Barry, <laughs> and Ivanhoe Donaldson, and James Foreman. You, you know, there was only two other people I was concerned about in the movement, because they both had cameras and took pictures. One was Marion, mm. the other was you. You know, and you I said you thought, had a I gotta put a stop to this. You had a picture. I mean, you got your agitation to do, but I, you know, I'm a white guy. I got you, you said I you, had, you had a picture roll. of me with a camera. I do, I do. And it's I, in Waveland. You're holding a camera. Huh. Not a Nikon reflex. Uh -huh. <laughs> a cannon. <laughs> but that's like, no, you were a serious photographer. Don't tell me you were. Probably a brownie. It wasn't no brownie. It was a can. It was, uh, okay, I, I think it's in here. I thought, uh oh. Hey. I was going to take this out. <laughs> That's a great picture. You knew Einstein? <laughs> yes. You're yeah. not that old. Yes. I you did. I didn't know, I didn't know Einstein came to uh, Lincoln University where I lived, and my parents tell me, I don't have any independent memory of this, that he told me, never remember anything that's already written down. And I followed that my whole life. Really? Yeah. I did that with Photoshop. Pretty good, huh? This okay, is a why wonderful do you like picture, this picture. Because this woman, this is the um, three the, of the four girls who were killed. One of them wanted to be buried separately, but three of them were, were funeralized together, and their caskets are taken down the highway. And this is spectators watching them go by. And this woman just seems to me to sum everything up. She was saying, what the hell is happening here? How did this happen? How does something like this go on? She looks so, so bereft, so angry, so awful. You, you know, I, when I had this, I had a little trepidation about making these comments about the National Geographic magazine. And I almost crossed it out, cause, but it, it, it worked out all right. But, Aside from the bleeds and things like that, I was going to say there should be some limit on the length of a telephoto lens that was being used. The trouble with that, because the trouble with that is this was made with a telephoto lens. So this should be the limit. This was either a 135 <laughs> or a 105. Nikon made both at the time. Uh, again, if no one repeats this, this might have been a 135. So that, that would be the absolute maximum ever allowed in Kenya or any other place. And, and I would never use it again. You know, I, when I left the movement, I, you know, I really wanted to be a photographer. And I, I regarded this as kind of juvenilia. And there was only a single picture I thought you know, was actually worthy of the, you know, not a political mm. world, but, but the world of the art world. And that was these cops giving me the finger, uh, which was also made with the same lens. And uh, it's remarkable in the pictures uh, oh. how, how successful this lens was, which I now don't want anyone else to use. The, these are the, among the staff members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Here's Julian Bontz sneaking a smoke in the corner. Uh, Gene Smith, John Lewis, uh, Judy Richardson, better known as Judy Rudy. I don't know who this guy with the glasses is. Lawrence Guillot, who lived here in D.C. That's Thelwell. Michael man. Thelwell, who's at the University of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, Lester McKinney, Marion Barry again. James Foreman here in the, in the foreground. And there's a guy behind him, this white guy. I know this white guy very well, but I can't think of his name. MacArthur Cotton and Mike Sayer. And Mike Sayer, unlike... Many people who work for SNCC is back living in Mississippi now, 
Uh, and this he's just still a, working down there. He's yeah. still, work, yeah, still cool. doing what he did then. Just he became a lawyer and just uh, doing a lot of good, good stuff. And did you name. see the thing in Delta and we're not? Where are we? Washington. In, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. you go through the tunnel in Delta from B to C. Yeah. And they had this huge lunch counter. And they do like the history of Atlanta. They yeah. start with like Indians throwing yeah. rocks at each other. And then, but you know, I didn't realize it was under construction. So, mm -hmm. so you kind of get in, you get the Civil War, and they burn the city. And there's SNCC, and it's massive. You know, just like as big as that. Mm -hmm. One of my pictures of the lunch counter. Oh, really? And I thought that was so no, cool. No, I haven't seen you know? that. Yeah, I got pictures of that. <laughs> I thought it was great, you know, and I think it went through Magnum and it wasn't credited, but it was huge. And I always wanted to do a work of art in public place. I never got to do it, but. And then there was a picture of John and, and some other stuff, but yeah, you new, never went from new, Delta? New, you don't go on Delta? Yeah, I do. But they have a new mayor in New York City, you know, you get something in the subway. Yeah, he's a. Well, that could be, yeah. Uh, we could, maybe.